Morning everybody. Monday the 22nd of June, the day after the solstice. Um, I got up at 4am on Sunday morning to, to watch the solstice and the sunrise over Stonehenge and though the cloud was very low and we didn't really see the sun very much it was a beautiful sight so I thought that we do a painting of the Milky Way over Stonehenge today in acrylic. Um, you can do this in watercolour as well, just prepare yourself some watercolour paper instead of some acrylic paper which is what I've got here um, and do a wet in wet wash over the top part of this image here. Um, I'm going to do it in acrylic. So I'm going to work directly onto the acrylic paper with my paint. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of white onto the lower area and then I'm going to add in a touch of um, this purple violet rouge colour from Dale and Rowney. Um, it's a sort of pinky rosy colour so if you've got any sort of rose madder or something like that it's a it's that tone there just to give it a little bit of colour in that lower area I'm just going to put a little bit around here there's a bit of water on my brush here but I'm just going to now blend it so I'm using the white to blend the paint so like you can see, I have not pre-mixed this, so I'm mixing it on the canvas. Make sure you come all the way down to the horizon. I've measured the horizon so it's nice and straight. So I just did a two inches up from each bottom corner. The quite a common mistake with horizons is that they're often crooked. So just make sure that they are straight. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a touch more white in there like that. Just got some cheap white here from Wilco. Just to lighten, what you want is the, the very base of the sky to be very white so that the stones stand out. Okay, so it's fairly nicely blended. I'm going to now take a darker, slightly darker purple which I've mixed using um, cadmium red and ultramarine blue. This is all acrylic again. I'm just gonna put a few darker patches in around that area there. And then I'm gonna mix again with my big brush. So again, just enjoy this part of blending but you need to put enough paint on so that you don't end up finding your paint drying off on you. Now, because we want the sort of stars at the end will come out in a sort of fan shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up bits of paint. I'm gonna start working in a, a fan shape like this. Okay. Now, if you lose your whites, just pop some more white back in. But you're going to work in a fan outwards like that. That will help with the perspective of the sky. A little bit more white in there. So we can keep that middle section nice and bright. So like I said, just work from the middle outwards like that okay so blend as much as you want if you want it really smooth then you need to keep going you can wipe off excess paint up here if the blending process is not quite working for you so just keep light touches and just sweep from the bottom 
outwards. I'm going to put a touch, a touch more white in there, just here. Right in the middle, right behind the stones. I know we've lost our stones, but I just wanted to put the, the stones in there just so you could see where I was working from initially. Okay. So again, if you need more white, just put it in. Keep dotting it on until you're happy. Just keep blending very lightly outwards, like so. And you'll find as the acrylic paint starts to dry off that the blending process will become slightly easier. And then, like I said, just um, wipe your brush off there. Right, so now we're into the darker tones. So again, put this dark tone, this purple, and we're going to put it in a sort of arc around here. Now, if you've got some purple ready, um, in a tube already, then you might get a nicer, slightly nicer purple than I've got. Now, this time I'm going to actually draw it in from the top. So just like that. Um, any excess, as it, as it fills up on your brush, just tap it off above here so it doesn't get too dark coming down into that what light patch. Like that. Okay, and then again, you can use a clean brush if you'd rather. You can just draw in the bottom streaks like that. We're trying to reserve that area, remember, um, of lightness at the bottom. Again, if you get too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off at the top because the top part we're going to cover with um, some Payne's Grey. So that'll all get covered up. I've got a blob of paint there, which I don't want. I'll blend that in, that's fine. So again, we're just working on the, on the sky, the background of the sky here, really. And we're going to put stars on top of this. So, right, so there we go. Don't fuss too much and be light-handed. So the next thing to do is to put some Payne's Grey. And I've got mixed Payne's Grey. If you haven't got Payne's Grey, then you can mix um, black. Oop, that's a bit gloopy. Uh, black. Let me just get rid of that. That's just paint that's not been used for a while and it's separated slightly at the top. So if it comes out like that, just wipe it off. Um, yeah, Payne's Grey is basically just black with a little bit of blue added into it to soften it. Black tends to be a little flat um, when, you've, when you put it down. Can you see how bitty that is? That's because it's separated. So I'm just going to mix that on the paper. And we're going to incorporate that into the lower area now. Once I've put a little bit of solid paint back in, although the bittiness is quite nice. So that, like I said, that's just where, because I haven't used this tube for a while, the paint tends to sort of separate inside the tube. So if you can, give it a good shake before you use it. Right, so mixed in. And we're gonna use the same process, which is just to draw it down into. So again, light touches, bring it down slowly into the painting here on both sides. Now, at this stage, you're going to have a lot of paint on your brush. You can, again, you can wipe it off up here. Um, but if you've got a, a rag, an old sock or whatever, then give your brush a wipe off 
and effectively using a dry brush technique. So just bring it down and then when it starts getting full again, wipe it off, bring it down. The less paint you've got on your brush here, the better basically. So continue to keep lifting and wiping. And you'll see that it eventually will come nice and blended. Again, keep working in this fan shape. Keep drawing it down into the whiter area. I'm just going to wash my brush off a little bit because what I want to do is push a little bit of the white up into the black. So wash your brush off really thoroughly and dry it off. So you're back, I mean, you can use a clean brush rather than using the same brush like I'm going to do because um, otherwise you get that, see? Just keep going backwards and Again, just wipe your brush off, wash it off if you feel you need to. Oops. Lost a little bit of white there. So I'm just going to pop a little bit back in there. Okay, so just keep working like this until you're happy. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to dry it off and, and then I'll do the next stage. Okay, so you work as long as you want blending this surface together I think I'm going to leave it there um, again like I said it needs to be wet so don't try and work with this dry because if you do that it'll it won't it just won't blend okay um, you can come back in if I just get another I mean, you can use uh, a new brush and just blend those lines in. But like, you, like you'll see later on, um, we're going to cover most of that up with stars anyway. Okay, so it's, it's just an underpainting, really. Okay. Right, the next stage is just to add a few patches of um, whites and, and pale pinks. So I've got some white paint here. I'm just going to follow where the main area of the Milky Way is coming up. So I'm just going to sort of dot it up that middle section there. Thin it out slightly as we go to the top. Um, there's another patch coming up this way. And we're going to use this paint fairly thinly and a little bit more white on the horizon coming out around there and then a little bit touch more over this side as well very bright in the middle uh, if you want to put a touch of yellow in there you can and I'm just going to sort of wipe the excess off my brush I'm just going to sort of pat it and blend it around that area Again, if you want to work almost with a dry brush and you can sweep it outwards 
like that into the sky. Dry brushing it. It might be that a little bit of the paint underneath is still a bit wet, but that's no bother, that can be blended in. So again, just dry brush it out. Uh, here you can sort of work side to side, it's up to you. If you feel like you need to put a little bit of water into it, then you can at this stage, just to sort of help with the um, acceleration of the drying process to prevent that is what I mean because obviously working with very thin paint here um, I've got a fairly large wash brush here which I'm just going to dry off because it was standing in the water and I'm just going to lightly just rub that in so that it blends into the background. Again, you can use this up, down, fan, fanning out to the side. And we're just gonna soften that into the rest of the sky. Just use, in, the darker areas, if you just use a sort of rotation, if you've got any hairs coming off, pick them off. Like that. Try not to pick up too much white paint on your brush. Try and keep it reasonably clean. And just sort of massage the colour in. Circular motions. This might take a little bit of work. Um, but it's up to you how you leave it. Okay, that's the next section. I'm just going to dry that off again. Right, the next stage is to um, splatter. So splattering is basically using a dry brush, um, an acrylic brush which has got um, fairly short hairs on it and is very, uh, it's not very flexible. Um, you can use toothbrushes and things like that also. And you want to mix up three shades. Um, you want a sort of a, a liquidy, almost like a single cream consistency of white, uh, and then a pale uh, blue, and then a pale pink color. And you're just, again, if you need to practice this on another sheet, then have a go with it first. It's really good fun, but it does go everywhere. Okay, and this is called splattering. So you just take some of the paint, not a huge, not, you don't want it dripping off the brush. You just want it on the brush and you're just going to flick with your, so you're just going to do this. It's lots of fun. Um, if you don't have a work surface like mine, then cover it with some newspaper. Cover yourself with um, an apron or some kind of working shirt. Um, so that you don't get covered as well. So you can see that this is going to cover most of the sky here, this white color. And we just want a fine, so keep your brush quite close to the work that you're working on and flick until most of the paint is gone. Okay, you can see that happening now already. Um, we're gonna go for more stars um, nearer to the bottom and we want the nearer to the horizon um, and we want them to be quite dense so that it stays light down the horizon and obviously that's the sky that's the furthest away uh, and, and the more stars there the better because that'll help with the perspective feeling of the painting. So we want more white in this area here. And you can see if you get too much paint on your brush, what tends to happen is you'll end up with these sort of almost like teardrop marks rather than spots. So just be careful that you don't get too much paint on your brush and also that it's not too liquid 
but again like I said just really go for it in this area because that is where the brightness is coming from and also it will help when you when it comes to getting your stones to stand out now we're going to go up this middle section so we're going to try and get a little bit more intensity of so I'm holding my brush really close to the painting and I'm trying to control where the splatter is going in that line which is coming up the central section of the painting more or less so again you can get a sheet of paper and hold it over if you can't control where these splatters go but obviously you've got wet paint here so you don't want to put the paper on top of your painting because it'll just stick so if you can just hold it nice and close and just try and get it just in that section there where the main body of the Milky Way is coming up and you can see we're more or less covering the marks that we made with the brush for the background so that, that's why you don't need to really fuss too much about the background undercoat because you're going to cover it more or less with stars so it doesn't have to be perfect that's what I'm trying to say all right so keep going with your whites until you're happy I'm going to put a few more if you get, can get the basic if you come up further away you get larger um, larger marks a bit more paint on your brush larger marks so you get some big stars and some little stars that also makes a, a big difference so again try you can put some of these on by hand you get very messy but don't worry about it right so just to move things on if you want to put more white on then please just go ahead um, but just because I, I don't want this video to go on forever um, I'm going to now work with the sort of bluey tone um, and we're going to do the same thing so I'm just going to intensify the area around and it's just nice to have some slight off whites here just to give it almost like a 3D feel um, it does work you'll see as you put it on it's it's quite interesting oops I just co covered that with my finger right so just a couple of little tones whether it's a bit of blue or a bit of purple I'll just put a, a few splashes in that corner there and a few splashes down this bottom end here um, so then I'm into this pale pale pink color I've just mixed these up in, in old tin foil cups they're really useful actually um, and it's a bit more pinky down here again turn your brush so it, it works in that sort of fan shape and you know like I said just concentrate in these areas where the main body of the Milky Way is and then that'll bring your focus to there you see rather than into the darkness of the sky which is so I'll just put a few down here right and I think for just for speed purposes I will leave it at that okay I'm going to dry this off and then you'll be able to see the next section right the next section I've got some in this time of austerity um, I managed to pick up some uh, match pots from uh, I think it was being q or somewhere like that and I'm going to use the green this is a matte green uh, I don't know exactly what color. oh Alep <laughs> okay I use these quite frequently because they're they, they were only like um, 50p or something so they're really useful for doing little paintings like this and they have a brush inside so you can even use the brush inside so I just need a, a bit of green in this lower area here to sit the stones on and um, I'm going to use also a, a little bit of that Payne's grey which if I shake now rather so it's not gloopy anymore hopefully 
I'll just put that again. Again, I'm being lazy and I'm just squeezing the paint straight onto the canvas. So you can do this or you can, you know, mix it up on your palette, whatever you want to do. So I've got a, an old brush here. I'm just going to blend this together now. So you can see it's still very gloopy. So I just want this to be fairly dark, um, working up to that horizon line in here like that. And I'm just going to blend backwards and forwards. <clears throat> I can't see where I made my mark earlier, um, but I know roughly where it is. So just pop that in. I'm just going to work with a slightly smaller brush actually in this area, just so I can get some accuracy where I put my, I've got a little bit more control with a smaller brush so I can get this horizon nice and straight. However, at the back of Stonehenge, or through the stones, you can see a little bit of landscape. So I'm going to put some slight um, undulations, just so that we get a little bit of suggestion of the landscape structure in the background. Okay, and then just blend backwards and forwards. <clears throat> and, be and because this green has got blue in it, you can see it's going a little bit bluey in, in colour. Because I don't, I don't want it to be green. You can't really see the grass. You can just see odd flecks of highlight, really, um, on the picture. So I just wanted to lighten that Payne's Grey colour up, really. If you want to put a bit more back in you can use any you know use a sap green or something like that what you've got in your palette again nice even strokes when you're blending right so I'll just use a little bit more of the green I'm going to put a touch up here on this left ha right hand side and a touch over that side and again just blend backwards and forwards again. Again it's up to you how much detail you want to put into this area. Oop, just knocked the camera with my head, sorry. I think we'll just push that up a little. Take a bit of paint from over there. Just because I've missed a bit of that area there with the sky, so I'm just going to push that up so it doesn't look a, a, a bit, it looks a bit bitty. Okay, so there we are. You can add to that later again. I'm going to dry that off. Okay, so now all I've done is I've mixed up a little pot of grey here with some white in it and I'm just going to put in a few of these stones. We're looking at leaving some nice positive gaps between these stones so that we can see the Milky Way coming through. Keep your paint nice and thick and use a fine brush just to put the main details in. If you feel like you need to draw this on first, then do that, um, just with a normal pencil. Make sure you dry your paper and your sky and your grass off first before you do that. And just, I'm just drawing with my my paintbrush but just keeping the paint nice and thick so it actually covers the underpainting part of your picture so closely observe 
where, where those stones are. It's quite important, especially if you end up showing this to a stone expert, they know where these stones are and how they're placed. And if there's one out of place, they'll, they'll see it. So I don't know whether you've ever been to Stonehenge, but I've been a few times and um, I went to the solstice two years ago. It's a marvellous experience, turning up there in the dark, thousands of people, all quiet. It was so peaceful because obviously it was like 3.30 in the morning when we got there and everybody's half asleep but there was a lot of people just lying on the ground in tucked up in sleeping bags waiting for the party to begin and as the sun came up there was all sorts of merriment it was lovely so we got that stone we got one two three and then we need a fourth on this side So keep blocking in. It doesn't matter if you get different sort of tones of um, of grey in there, which is why I've left my mixing um, palette a little bit patchy because that will give your stones a little bit of tone and will create the illusion of marks in the stone. So that's quite nice. Don't over mix your paint at this stage. And also you can, you know, there there is some colour in the stone. So you can either add it in at this stage or you can wait, let it dry off and then um, add it later. So, I mean, you've got the blue stones of um, Stonehenge. That's what how they were named. So little patches of blue and purple in the stone will help with the colour if you so require. So we've just got the final three on this. So I've like like you can see there, I've got a very fine brush and it's enabling me to paint these stones without fussing too much. I'm just picking up a lot of paint on my brush and getting it on the paper without overthinking it. Okay. So we do have some patches of darkness in areas. So I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put a few little blobs just on either side. I've put some there as well. So you can put sort of dark patches and highlights on. So I've just got the top of my um, pot there, which has my Payne's, Payne's Grey black colour in it. So I'm just going to mix a little bit on the on the top of the pot. I'm just going to put some shadow in. So the light is obviously coming from behind, so you wouldn't see much shadow, but the the marks that you would see would be on the um, in the pits of the stone, so where the marks are, and also where the stone is um, projecting shadow from one stone to another. So there's a little bit of a dark area there, there's a bit of a dark area there. And just keep going until you're happy that you've got enough detail on there. Okay. Again, I'm working on top of wet paint here, uh, which is sort of softening the marks that I make as I go along. Um, if you If you were to work um, on top of dry paint, which you can. You can let this grey dry off uh, and then work on top of it, but the marks would be very um, solid in colour, so you might want to sort of just mix them down a touch just so that they don't, but the benefit of working on top of wet paint is that it mixes in the process of laying it down. So just enjoy the benefit of that. This stone is slightly backwards of the others, so it's got quite a lot of um, darkness in it. So I just pick up some like that. And you can see that the 
like I said, the mark making that I'm doing now is actually creating a rough effect. So, okay, so there you stones. I'm going to work on this a little bit more and I will, um, it, oh, in the same respect, if you want to work on um, highlights, then just take a bit of white directly from the white area mix up a, a much paler grey than what you were working with initially even working directly with whites and you can pop in uh, the, the highlights on the stones as well so working with the middle section there it's just going to pick up a bit of light coming through from that middle section of the Milky Way like so all right I'm going to fiddle with this a little bit more and I will um, put the final picture on at the end so you can see the finished work and I will also put it on at the beginning um, the only thing to do now is just to put a little bit if you can see around what I'm going to work on around the base of the stones are some shadow marks so again just pop those in so there's just little fiddly bits like that and I don't want this film to go on forever again so like I said I will finish the mark making off put the final picture on and then you can see where but it's basically just working with a variety of grey tones all the way through to black um, and a fine detail brush. The other thing you might want to do is just to put some highlights of green in this area here. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, like the uh, tutorial. It really helps um, if people who are not used to watching my tutorials come along and they see that you've liked the tutorials um, it really helps them to choose which ones to have a go at first okay hope you're all well um, looks like we're going to have a little bit of a heat wave in the next week so enjoy painting enjoy your garden and uh, stay safe everybody bye <laughs>